بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لهبة في الله I wanted to point out something very uh, and and make it as brief as possible and hopefully as beneficial for us all as possible and we will study inshallah ta'ala in the future go over a, a very important treatise by imam ibn rajab which talks about some of these aspects about ghiba and namima uh, versus uh, uh, the uh, refutations or a knowledge based refutations against ahl bid'ah but what i wanted to mention because there is so much misunderstanding because it's so widely practiced that there are very few people that you see especially in the West who when they refute others and other ideologies that they tend to uh, often go astray many people go astray and fall into backbiting slander lying, many kind of evils uh, emanate from this because speaking about Ahl Bidah and speaking about Mukhalifin, those people who differ, who have made mistakes or what have you these are Sharia sciences and as Sheikh Abdulaziz Raji mentioned and before him many ulama, Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and Kathra that making the issue of takfir, of tabdi' and tafsiq are sharia principles, are sharia principles meaning that they're governed by the sharia, they're not governed by our desires they're not governed by our intellect uh, and so, so on and so forth but rather they are Islamic they're aspects of the deen and they are really reserved for the people of knowledge the ulama and those students of knowledge or those students of knowledge that have some ability in those uh, and have a, a sufficient knowledge of those of the criterion and sufficient knowledge about what they're refuting what they're calling to and what they're refuting and who they're refuting and so forth so I wanted to talk very briefly about the differences between refutation and rhetoric and this is uh, just some notes I took myself uh, and I want to go more extensive in the future about this but this is something that I've observed and uh, and many of the ulama have, have highlighted this factor and it, these factors and it's very important for us to have an understanding especially for those people who get involved in that and those people who call themselves advising people but yet they don't have the knowledge and tools to do so properly the first thing I wanted to mention is that a, a refutation, a proper refutation, again, we're qualifying this, it's muqayyid, it's, it's specified. A proper refutation is based on ilm, it's knowledge based versus desire based. So, that means that the person who is refuting someone, they're doing it based on knowledge, based on knowledge of what they're refuting and knowledge of what is correct that takes ilm the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man yurid bi khairan whatever law wants good for a person he gives them fiqh fi so that requires some fiqh fi and the opposite of that is desire based which we find so many even many many books in arabic you'll find sometimes from people who are supposed to be scholars and many students of knowledge i can think of countless that I, I possess, that I've bought from Yemen and from many places in Saudi and stuff and not all of them are ilm based their hujja is not always uh, 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 based on knowledge but when you see those major scholars and those scholars that are uh, have itqan in that fin in that, in that science that you see that they uh, base it on knowledge not their desires so desire based refutation would be in which someone it's a personal issue so then they make a book 
that, or they make tapes, I'm refuting so-and-so because, although it's not mentioned, but they will try to make something out of nothing. Maybe something that's not even a mistake, but the point is they want to refute because of their intention is not correct. It's desire-based. And this is very, very dangerous. And may Allah protect us from it, Amin. The second point that I want to mention, or a second difference, uh, is an elmi refutation, a knowledge-based refutation, has has general benefits to it, that you can benefit. Maybe you can benefit some important qawaid and principles of Ahlul Sunnah. You learn something from it. You learn ilm al nafia something that's going to help you practice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen better, come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have a better understanding of Allah wa ta'ala's religion, versus uh, those which are based on personal grudges between people. So because they have a personal grudge, they make general adilla, all kind of adilla. They'll bring you tons of ayahs from the Quran and tons of uh, uh, ahadith from the Prophet sallallahu but it may not even have anything to do with what they're refuting. But they, it makes it, it looks good for them. It looks good to mention many names of the ulama, but it has nothing to do with their, what they're refuting. And this you see a lot in so many refutations that are not based on knowledge, nor is there based on uh, much benefit. Another point is that an elmi refutation is more objective. It's giving you those benefits, and it is not just a pure attack, but it may be even that it, it's objective, so it will correct the individual, not just attacking his or her honor, not just destroying and belittling the person. And this is the opposite of those people who use hyperbolic language, and I want you to pay attention to that. When you read some of the refutations that are out there, look at the language they use and how much they infer of what someone means, what they mean, instead of giving just. So a, a knowledge-based refutation is based on justice as well. That it shouldn't use hyperbolic language, meaning exaggerating. Sheikh so-and-so said, he means this, which is Dalal. Uh, this guy said this and he did this and it means this or he means this by it so we have to be very careful and being um, excessive in our language the way we speak about individuals and the way we quote and mention about them when we we have to be just Ahlul Sunnah is just Ahlul Sunnah is just because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was just and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Al-Adil he is just He's the just, the most just, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wants us and commands us to be of the muqsateen, to be, the, be of those people who are just. Another point that we find in a, a difference between them is that the knowledge-based refutation, the conclusions are draw, drawn from knowledge, from ilm. Whereas uh, if it's based on desires, the conclusions are, uh, are based upon assumptions of what the person said. And inferring and putting everything in the most negative spin on what they say. And this is imperative to when, when we have to be just with everyone, even Ahl Bid'ah, even non-Muslims. Everyone, we must be just. The Muslim is ordered to be just. And we have to be careful about the assumptions we make about what someone says. Instead, we should try to bring the nas, and it should be in the context of the way they use it and what their other statements support. So if someone makes a mistake in a statement, and it sounds like a, something from a Quran a Muslimin, but in general, everything they pump out and everything you see from them shows the opposite and shows that they have been they adhere to kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf but yet maybe they made a mistake in the ibarah maybe they need to be advised on that maybe they uh, misunderstood something whatever the case may be we shouldn't assume the worst but we should put the best spin and try to find out from that individual
especially if they're from someone from Ahl Sunnah. If they're from Ahl Bidah, no, we leave it in its it's clear. This person, we already know because all of his other texts and show show us that he's an extreme Sufi grave worshiper or whatever the case may be. There's no need to put Husn al Van for him and Husn al Van in his for his speech, and that is what the Salaf were upon. They were not upon putting Husn al Van for Ahl Bidah. But Ahl Bidah, they said, if the person was known to be from the Khawarij, they're not going to say, well, what he meant here probably, and put the best spin on it, they're going to take it at the face value of its dalal. And the last point I want to mention, Ahabat Tafillah, is that a, a refutation, a knowledge-based refutation, should be based upon evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and the, the Salaf, Ijma, those things which are considered adilla in the Sharia, the four maratib al ilm Quran, wa Sunnah, uh, al Ijma, wa Qiyas, those are the maratib of, 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 of Dalil, of evidence. So these are the things that we need to pay attention to when someone is refuting. It should be based upon those things, not based upon their desires and so forth. And this is in opposition to taqlid, blind following. And taqlid, ahabat filah, is blind following someone, statement, which uh, is not a hujja. Following someone who is not a hujja, blindly, uh, and that, that's the, the meaning. Meaning that someone, any of us, our statements were not not a hujjah. Even our ulama, their statements are not a hujjah. We can't, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah is not a hujjah. He's not a hujjah. He's not in any, you know, his statements, they can be refuted. They can be, you know, some are correct, some are not. He, he makes mistakes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata khayra khata'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of those who make sin are those who repent. So we don't say, just Shaykh al-Islam say, unless it conforms with the Adilla. It has to go back, it has to have uh, some reference or uh, to, to, to go, referring back to the Quran, the Sunnah, Ijma, meaning consensus, or Qiyas, analogy. So it has to be in conformity with that. It can't depart from those things. And this is why, so the point being, taqlid leads us, a lot of us astray. And in and, and our refutations, we'll see someone said, well, sheikh so-and-so refuted this sheikh. So then they make a hukum on that and they make ilzam, they make others follow that hukum. But that is not in and of itself dalil. You can say the sheikh said, but it, it, it requires, for those people who have knowledge, it requires upon them, it's, it's a base on them, the talib al-ilm has to look into those issues before they carry that hukum and just say, well, sheikh so-and-so said that this sheikh is dalal now. He's misguided. He's went astray. You have to look at the evidence. You can't say, well, sheikh so-and-so, whether it's sheikh, uh, sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, or especially in uh, of our ulama from this time. You can't say, well, sheikh Rabi said, sheikh Ubaid said, sheikh uh, Bazmul said, sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi said, Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli said, Sheikh uh, Ali Nasser Faqi said, Sheikh uh, Alama uh, bin Fozan said. No, that in, in and of itself, we it's permissible for us to make taqlid if we don't have the knowledge to do so. But to make ilzam of the other people, to make others follow your taqlid, if they have the ability to look into that issue, then that's not permissible. Why? Because they may find that this is something in the ulama dif differ over. And the proof is with this one, not the one who made the reputation. So that's why we have to be very cautious, Ahmed And we love all of our ulama, and may Allah preserve them, Ameen, and rectify our condition and their condition, and, and may bless us to be one hand, Ameen. We also have to beware of slogans. Slogans are also uh, more in line with rhetoric than. Uh, than dalil, than a knowledge-based reputation, slogans and phrases. For example, you'll see people, they won't know anything, but all they will say, all they can use because they are restricted by taqlid and they have to make taqlid of what's been translated to them on these websites, 
they have to make taqlid because they don't know Arabic and they don't know the ulama and they don't they haven't studied anything. So then what they do is they say you are not following the ulama. That's a slogan. That's a common slogan. We're sticking with the ulama. But here we have a group of the ulama from Ahl Sunnah, a group from the ulama from Ahl Sunnah, and they're differing over issue. Maybe there's a mistake. There has to be a mistake in there unless it's an area of ijtihad where there's some room. So it's based on dalil. It's how you determine. Not, you're not with the ulama because you didn't take those four ulama, you didn't take from those four ulama who we accept. And you took from those other ones who we don't accept. That's not, that's not uh, based on ilm or fiqh. Nor is that correct. That you take these scholars and they're, I'm talking about these are ulama from Ahl Sunnah we're talking about. We're talking about differences between Ahl Sunnah here. So we have to be cautious of just using these phrases. Uh, you're, you're slandering the ulama. You're not going with the ulama. Or you're ignorant. But yet they, they have no knowledge and they claim this. Uh, Sheikh so-and-so said only, only that as a proof. Instead of being able to look. And this especially is advice for those students of knowledge. Because these issues, hopefully the lay people, of course they do get into it and they shouldn't. But the students of knowledge especially, they have to be careful because they're supposed to be students of knowledge. If they're students of knowledge, they should have some ability, depending on their level. Of course, they mutafawit. They have different levels. But they should have some ability to look at what's being stated. Either to walk up and stay out of it. Because not everything you need to get into and every fitna and every trial that you need to involve yourself in. Or they should... If they have the ability, knowledge base, they should look into it instead of before they can just take a position. And we've already mentioned and, and done videos about this from beautiful speech of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and bi'idhnillah ta'ala, we hope to uh, bring about some beneficial knowledge in the future. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.